and thank you for asking me to to qualify it felt like such a, a gift and i just wanted to read something from from step 11 in the basic text <clears throat> just a little bit it says one other discovery which arose from regular use of medicine i think someone's on usage no. um one other discovery um which arose from regular use of meditation and prayer was a dawning sense that a basic need in our lives was being filled, especially for us as sex and love addicts, a need for love had seemed insatiable. The act of addiction hadn't really touched it and the support network that we built for ourselves in sobriety, while um, life sustaining didn't quite touch that intense need either. We might say that during the addictive period, it was as though we were trying to quench a terrible thirst by drinking salt water. The more we drank, the more dehydrated we got until our very lives were threatened. In new sobriety, we try to alleviate our thirst by busying ourselves with slat and with emotional nourishment, something like eat, eating oranges. But in order for our real thirst to be satisfied fully, eventually we would need pure water. We found that this thirst, the need for love was a spiritual thirst and the water was the God of our understanding. Although some of us did not believe in or had turned away from God when we came into slap, we came to find a way of life that involved a loving partnership with that power. As we developed that closeness with God, we found that our need for love was mysteriously satisfied. It had been love we needed all along, and love was of God. Most wonderful of all, when we walked through each day with a sense of being hand in hand with God as a spring of love seemed to flow from within, available to help us quench the thirst for love of ourselves and others. Thus we came to find with God and intimacy with others. Um, yeah, I just wanted to read that because, I mean, the topic is probably that the core of my disease is that I'm trying to manage and control my relationships. And that's why I'm in so much pain because I'm not able to just go with the flow and be in life and let things happen. And because I'm in a million forms of fears or resentments or, um, you know, trying to get needs met from like the way I grew up with a father who is an alcoholic, I was always trying to chase him home uh, from the bar and I couldn't, and I took it personally. Like I took it personally that I could not control him. And I drove myself insane because I can't control other people. And so what I did was I shut down and what happened was I became very resentful and manipulative with men. So even when a good man would come along, it's like, I was like, what's that? Like it, it, it was always about trying to play a game. And, and that really just came from like being unable to like totally let go and say I'm powerless over other people. Um, my life is unmanageable. And that's what I found the process in SLA has been like, I love the reading because a lot of it is sitting with discomfort. Like um, I came into SLA when I got sober nine years ago and I wasn't ready. I was just so triggered. I was like, I can't stay here. There's no way I can stay here. I had to get sober. But I knew when I got sober, a part of the reason was because of the danger around my acting out. But then when I got sober, there was another issue, which was the behavior, the insanity. So I was sober and I was seeing how crazy I was behaving. And I was like, what is wrong with me? And there was so much shame because I would see all my friends getting into relationships and they would just stay in them and they would evolve and they would go through challenges. But they had this independence it's described in the big book, like that reliance, that self-reliance, whereas an addict is just like creating so much drama because it's like really they're like a child. They don't know how to manage it. Like they're totally in battle with this disease. It's all consuming. And that's what I was like. And when I first uh, got sober, like I uh, lost my abstinence because of this person with food addiction. I, I was willing to give up my career. But the thing was, if I looked at it, the sex addiction, the love addiction, because when I got sober, it wasn't sex addiction anymore. You know, it was really love addiction. And when I got sober, it was like, I needed that distraction of somebody to fix. It was like my dad in order to have a focus to stay in that wound. And it was so hard to like stay in these rooms because I came in here and I thought it was a dating program. I thought, oh, I'll go in a slap 
and then I'm going to get fixed. But inside of me, the child in me was like, I don't want to date anyone. No way. I don't trust anyone. And so coming to these meetings was just such, it was like, like the scared me inside comes to these meetings and I hear the wisdom of other people and I hear what it is to have loving relationships through these meetings because people are real, you know, they share about their shame, they share about what they go through. And that's all we really have. All we have is our truth. It's God, it's in God's hands when it's the right fit with someone. Like that's my experience. Like I've dated someone in sobriety. Uh, so I got my bottom lines. I came back to SLA like when I was three years sober cause I hit a bottom around someone. Um, and he was in and out of AA and um, I loved the drama and I had to come in and I got my bottom lines and I got a lot of freedom. And then I started working on my career and I had top lines. Like I wanted to travel and I wanted to work in a certain field and all of that stuff started to happen. Like literally um, I got this freedom when I had my bottom lines of feeling like safe, actually, that's what it felt like. Um, but then what happened was, was that like, I didn't have a sponsor at the time because I, I came in in Berlin. There was very few, uh, there was no sponsors for women. Um, and so I, I tried sponsoring someone to like, you know, but really I, you know, I was, I was struggling because I had no dating plan and I became anorexic basically with men. And, um, and it was like a magnet to alcoholics essentially and trying to keep myself away from them. Um, and so, you know, then I started to, through AA, I tried to, to date in a sober way, but the same hysterical stuff would come up. And I was like, what is wrong with me, you know? Um, and then I hit a bottom two years ago. I was, I was in so much intrigue. It was killing me. It was like, I was just, in so much self-obsession and and so much like this guy or this guy or this guy and then i don't want this guy and i don't want like total fantasy and and feeling like i'm 35 at the time and i was like i want to have a family and kids and i was like my thinking and where i'm at is is empty like nothing's happening in my life my work is getting better but what is going on and so I hit the bottom, I came into SLA and I found someone who's a really solid program and he's gay and he started bringing me through it because I knew him from Berlin. And then I was advised to get a female sponsor. I was advised to just spend time with women. It was very important, I think, because it's kind of the first time actually in my recovery where I mostly just talk to women. Like I very rarely, and now I'm learning to have friendships with men, but I'm very boundary with it. And that's okay. You know, I've learned from experience. If that's what I need to do, that's okay right now. And yeah, as I said, I hit the bottom because I started dating someone who was sober and he was very loving. And, and I never had felt that level of serenity with someone and that level of observing the way initially is like, I don't think I want to have kids. And then I could see he was starting to change his mind and but there was issues around visas because I was in LA and I had to come back to Europe. And so, you know, um, but I had that experience of a really positive experience with someone in a relationship where there's just so much love and based on friendship and respect and a lot of unspoken um, love for each other. So I didn't have to fix myself. You know, I didn't have to go into rooms to go, what's wrong with me or, you know, but what I did notice was I kept um, focusing on his inventory, you know, and I kept projecting onto him my own needs. And I had a lot of shame around my lust and sexual issue, you know. And so anyway, when I came in like two years ago, I started working the steps. I, I started going through the gentle way. And then I also started going through the um, slab basic text. And more recently, I've got become part of a WhatsApp group, which is amazing. It's all very big book orientated. And I need it because I need to get back into the place of spiritual principles because that's what I need. I need God in my life. Um, and, and yeah, over the course of like, I'm now on a Greek island. It was like a vision of mine for a long time. 
I came into recovery once I came into SLAT, I hit a bottom around my workaholism during COVID. Um, and I didn't even realize it was like the first time I realized like um, that workaholism was a major way of me protecting myself from a partner because my mother was the one who used work as her stability so that she didn't need my dad. You know, she didn't have to deal with if he left or not. Um, so she had this strength, but like the thing for me is I was like, well, I want intimacy in my life and I don't want to be a caretaker and I, I don't want to work, be a workaholic, you know? Um, so it's just been interesting because with the workaholism recovery and with the SLA recovery, it's like, I'm really learning to just like live my life, you know? Um, and and my it's like what was described in that text my relationships are forming from a place of love you know they're not forming and i see it now in friends who like flirt with men and whatever and i'm like can they how can they get away with it and i'm just like it doesn't really matter you know because the experience with the healthy relationship was that i was just very like balanced and and i wouldn't say quiet but i was just in myself and when I met him he was in himself and so when we started dating because there was no dysfunction it was like do you want me for coffee there was like clear communication and so it was like um that's how I feel in general and so it's not really um I think a healthy partnership with someone is not really any different to like good friendships um, because what it's based on is that level of trust. And, and also you don't push friendships, like friendships happen over time. Sometimes you don't talk to them for a week. And what I noticed was like, so I met when I came into the SLA recovery, I met two men then in the process because, you know, and, and, um, and basically I had to learn through it. Like I really learned, I was choosing people who were addicts, you know? And I kept my bottom lines and I was through my bottom lines really able to see their stuff coming up and then go, oh, you're not emotionally available. Okay. And then like move on, even though it's very painful going through the withdrawal, go, this isn't right. And not beat myself up, you know, realize like I have my journey, I have my path. And, and um, I definitely learned a lot from these, like God put these people in my, on my path for a reason one of it was just superficiality like the teenager in me and my therapist said that to me that was another thing i did differently was i got a therapist and she and i got a therapist from ireland because that's where i'm from like it's very important for me to know where i'm from and to connect to the history you know because there's a trauma and stuff like this too and um and basically uh what was i gonna say it's like going off a bit but um the thing that i've learned with SLA, and i feel like it still stands is it's not so important to know the how of it. I do the work and if the trauma comes up, it comes up, but I don't try and force it and I don't try and figure it out. I just show up and I see what happens and my life starts to move in a different way. My relationships start to change. I also, the other thing I loved about the step 11 is like essentially without that like addiction because having a slab program which is having a sponsor working the steps and sponsoring other women I have to give it a way to keep it you know saying yes to, to qualifications and knowing that this isn't just about coming in here to get away from a qualifier this program is about showing up for myself because nobody gives or takes my power from me it's like nobody puts a drink in my mouth like okay, yeah, I might could be a victim and go, well, I'm an alcoholic, but it's like, actually I have a choice to go to AA. And what's more is my life gets really good because of it. It's the same thing with SLAA. It's like, if you like stay out of the drama and you just like show up and take the actions and reach out and like do the best you can, like I can promise you your life just lifts in a way that's like, it's not of my will. It's not of my thinking. It's on a spiritual level. Um, and, you know, the other thing too was just like the self will I've had around wanting to have children and a family. And recently I've really had to, it's just like when I had food issues, like I was just like, but it's too late. I'm too old. I've screwed my life up. I screwed up opportunities. You know, I should have gotten 15 abs. minutes. Thanks. I was like, I should have gotten abstinent when I got sober, you know, blah, blah, blah. And somebody said to me, it's like, 
through your relapse, like through your struggle with food, like you're going to clean up all the crap that's the causes and the conditions. So it's not a waste of time. You're like healing, you know? And when you heal it, it's like fourth dimension. What was an issue of like age or what people think of me or survival, all this stuff that goes out the door because you come back into a sense of like, I'm okay as I am right now. I have enough. I totally love and accept myself as I am. And I also, I just trust God. Like, and you know, with the food stuff, I just kept giving it to God. I was like, God, like, if you don't want me to be abstinent, if you want me to be in food addiction, well, fine. You know, it's a horrible life, but if you want me to be in that, like, fine, help me to get out of my selfishness so I can show up for people because I'm totally self-centered in it. And I've done the same recently. I've realized like I've been working the steps, but I still have that egoic thinking that like, I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to find a partner or I even know what my partner is going to look like, or, you know, it's going to be like this, you know? And instead it's like, I am learning to be in the day. Like last week I went for a swim in the beach every day. Like my neighbor upstairs is 70 and she's amazing. And she's like a mentor in so many ways. And I feel like God is so taking care of me, you know, like she did my like colors and we went across the island and we're going to go to another place. And at the same time, then with my work calls and my freak out, I'm like, oh my God, I'm never going to work again. And it's like, not true at all, you know? And it's just like, I never would have seen that with the SLA stuff, you know, when I was in my bottom two years ago, I was just like a teenager trying to fit in with all the cool people in the city who are like getting older, but they're still like teenagers. And I was around it and I felt awful, but I thought these are the people I have to be with. That was me in my lower consciousness. And in SLA, what I find is like, I feel I have the power to go, that doesn't feel good. Like, I don't want to spend time with that person. Okay, that's how I can see my future, where there's like all this self-will or they're all fighting or they're getting divorced or it's just so much ego or like self-promotion. And then I'm like here with my seven-year-old neighbor who's like done all sorts of careers, has had her kids, you know, so, so much service. She's like full of life, full of joy, you know? And I was like, that's what I want. Like, I want like a joyful life, you know? And I don't mean like fake joy. I mean, I mean, genuine, like I go up the mountains in the morning, I run down and I like say, yes, ass, you know, I'm learning Greek, you know? I was just like, <laughs> I'm like really happy, you know? But like my head is like, no, you can't be happy. You know, you got to struggle. Like you really got to struggle. Like I'm with Sly, you got to struggle too. You got to make it happen. And it's just like, but that, it doesn't say that. Like I've learned that in AA, I don't have to make myself not drink. And right now today, I'm not acting out. And in not acting out and in starting to like learning to be with myself and take care of myself and letting that flow happen that's me letting recovery happen to me as opposed to me trying to control the process because you know i don't know i just as i said me manifesting it is like a teenager and my was just like realizing that it's not the guys you know it's not my family even it's about me being true to my values today and when i'm true to those values and i just keep coming here it's an open-heartedness you know and somehow like I don't know I just know that like I show up I take the actions that are suggested and I start changing and I start to feel very fulfilled I start to feel very loved and I start to realize people love being around me because they feel really because I'm available for them you know even if I think you know, at times I struggle, it's like, I'm still available for them. And, um, and that's where I'm at today. I'm just in the, I, I guess the most important thing for me is just keep it in today and just trust God has got you. You know, I think that's, that's my, I want there to be hope in these rooms because there really is I don't think the solution is in the analysis of the drama. Like in AA, they say, we don't focus on the mess. We focus on, thanks. We focus on the solution. And that's not to stop people. People can say whatever they want in a meeting, 
but it's just that there really is a solution and um and i love this program and i'm looking forward to hearing everyone share and um i'll leave it there and i've left my number in the chat and thank you for asking me to to qualify it felt like such a, a gift